Let's go, Dundee! It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter 12, lesson number one, an introduction to this chapter on complex numbers. Let's start off with a quadratic equation. Z squared take away 4z plus 13 equals 0. In order to solve a quadratic, Louise, what do you do? Factorize. Brilliant, you would factorize. And if you can't factorize, can't factorize this one, what do you then use? Quadratic formula. Brilliant, you would use your quadratic formula. So, the quadratic formula from your national 5, you would have z equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And you would get the values of a, b and c just from your coefficients up here. So, we've got the 1, the negative 4 and the 13. Sub them into your quadratic formula. Dun, dun, dun. And you would end up getting 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 2. So what? I know. We get the square root of a negative. Boom, boom, boom. What does that mean if you get the square root of a negative? Well, it means you can't go any further with that. And it means the quadratic equation would have no real roots. And the reason is because you end up with the square root of a negative. This b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. But what we could do is we could work out the non-real roots. And this is how it is done. So the bit that's stopping us going any further with this is the square root of negative 36. But let's try and find another way of writing the square root of negative 36. What we can do with that is we know negative 36 is the same as 36 times negative 1. And because we have the square root of something times something, we could split that up. So it's the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. If we have that, well, the square root of 36 we know is 6. Brilliant. And the square root of negative 1 we can't work out. So what we do is we call that i. Why do we call it i? Well, i for the word imaginary. i is going to be an imaginary number. And i in maths represents the square root of negative 1. We do that because it allows us then to continue with this. So if we keep going, we will have z equals, well, this 4 plus the square root of negative 36 over 2 will become 4 plus or minus 6i over 2. And then dividing the 4 and the 6i by 2 would give us 2 plus or minus 3i. So i is known as an imaginary number, which means for this we would have z equals 2 plus 3i or 2 minus 3i as your imaginary number, which means that you would end up with what's known as complex numbers for your solutions. The results then, the roots are known as complex numbers, and a complex number is always going to be of the form x plus yi. In other words, it's going to be the sum of a real number and an imaginary number, and again, i is going to be the square root of negative 1. Note that if i was equal to the square root of negative 1, then i squared, well, you would be squaring it, and you've got the square root, so you would just end up with negative 1. So i squared is negative 1, i is the square root of negative 1. Let's look at that a little more. So let z be a general complex number. So general complex number, you'd have x plus yi. x is known as the real part of z. It's the real part of your complex number. And y is known as the imaginary part. What we can do is we could write down what the real part and the imaginary part are. So let's try a couple of examples. So we can say the real part of z is going to be x, and the imaginary part of the complex number z is equal to y. So let's take the complex number negative 2 plus 5i. What is the real part? Well, we can say the real part of this complex number, the negative 2 plus 5i, is equal to... What would it be, Jessica? Good, it would be the negative 2. It's the bit without the i. And the imaginary part, the imaginary part, i m for imaginary, the imaginary part of the 2, negative 2, plus 5i, what would that equal, Mark? Brilliant, that would just equal 5. It's really the number of i's that you would have. Okay, which would be 5. Let's try another complex number if we've got z equals negative 4i. Well, you could say re, so the real part of. You could also write it as re and then z, so the real part of z. What's the real part of z in this case? Brilliant. 
it would just be zero because you could write that as zero take away four i. You need a real part and an imaginary part. Here there is no real part, so it would just be zero. The imaginary part, so i m and then in bracket z, the imaginary part of z, again, that's just how many i's you would have, which would be negative four. Brilliant. So the imaginary part of z would equal negative four. Moving on, let's look at equal complex numbers. So two complex numbers are equal only, 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 only if the real part and the imaginary parts are equal. So you could say that A plus BI is equal to C plus DI only if A is the exact same as C, so the real parts have to be the exact same, and the imaginary parts have to be the same as well. So what else would you have? good, you'd have B equals D. So the real parts would have to be equal and the imaginary parts would also have to be equal. If you are told that two complex numbers are equal, you can equate the real and the imaginary parts to try and solve problems such as this one. So example one, given that X plus two Y I equals three plus X plus one I, where X and Y are real numbers, find the values of X and Y. So to do this, what you want to do is because you are told that they are equal, we've got that here, we know that the real parts would have to be equal and the imaginary parts would have to be equal. So let's start off by equating the real parts. If you do that then, Amna, what would you get? What are the real parts on the left and on the right? Brilliant. The real part on the left is X. It's a bit without any eyes, so it'll be X and X would have to be equal to Good, it would have to be equal to three. Again, the bit that's not being multiplied by i. So x would equal three. Woo, well we found x, easy. After we equate the real parts, what would you do next, Amar? Brilliant, you would then equate the imaginary parts. So equating the imaginary parts, what would you have on the left-hand side? Brilliant, you would have your two y. And because these complex numbers are equal, that would have to equal the imaginary part on the right-hand side. So, Callum, that would be, brilliant, that would be your x plus one. All you're doing is just saying how many i's you have on the left and how many i's on the right. Just take the coefficient of i. Because we know two i equals x plus one, and we know, we just found out that x equals three, we can sub that in, so we can say that two i would equal three plus one. In other words, 2y equals 4, and if we know 2y is 4, we can say y equals 2. So, we are asked in the question, find the values of x and y. Well, we just found out that x equals 3, and y would equal 2. So that has answered that question. Woo! Moving on, looking at the addition, subtraction, and multiplication of complex numbers. So example two, using the complex numbers, z equals four plus three i, and w equals one take away two i, find, first of all, z plus w. So with z plus w, you know z is the complex number four plus three i, and we are wanting to add that to w, and w is the one take away two i. Whenever you have one of these problems and you are substituting in, you are far best to put brackets around what you're replacing the Z and the W with. After that, get rid of the brackets. Well, for this, because we're adding, it's not really going to make a difference, but we'd have the 4 plus 3i. That would just become plus 1, and it's still going to be the takeaway 2i. Only time it really does make a difference is when you are subtracting. But save making any mistakes, just get into the habit of subbing in and putting brackets around the bit that you are replacing it with. From here, how would you simplify that? What could you do, Smilty? Brilliant, all you want to do is add the real parts and then add the imaginary parts. So the real parts are the bits without the coefficient of i, so it's just the four, add the one, which will give you five, and then i is the imaginary part. So we've got three i, and we take away two i, which leaves us with one i. So the answer to that one will be five plus i. Woo! Moving on for B, we've got Z take away W. Jensei, how would you do that? Brilliant, you would just replace the Z and the W with what they're equal to. So Z is the four plus three I still, and we're taking away, remember this is where you have to have to have to have the brackets. So we're taking away the one take away two I. Get rid of the brackets, so the four plus three I, imagine a one there, you multiply it by one, it would just stay as the four plus three I, that's not changing. We're gonna be taking away the one, and we're taking away the negative two I, because we're taking away the negative there, that would become 
plus. Brilliant. So you'd have the plus two I. From here, once again, you want to find the real parts and the imaginary parts. DJ, the real parts would be good for takeaway one, which is three. And the imaginary parts, what would that be, Caitlin? Good, that would just be five, because you would have the three I plus the two I, which would give you the five I. So we'd have the answer of three plus five I. Woo! Next one for C, we've got ZW. Bassett, what does ZW mean? Good, it means you're just going to multiply them together. So we'd have the 4 plus 3i, and we're multiplying it by this one takeaway 2i. Oh, this looks awfully like multiplying our brackets with algebra. You're perfectly right, Adam, it does. So, what would you do then? Good. So, you would have the 4 times 1, which would give you the 4. You would have the 4 times the negative 2i, which would be the negative 8i. You'd have 3i times 1, which would be plus 3i. And you'd have the 3i times the negative 2i, which would give you negative 6i squared. So, all you would do is just multiply that out the way you have been doing for years. Woo! After that, what do you notice about this one, Amy? Good, you've got an i squared. And what is i squared equal to, Amy? Brilliant. You know i squared is equal to negative 1. So we can say then this would be the 4 take away 8i plus the 3i, which would, I suppose, simplify to the negative 5i. But this take away 6i squared, replace i squared with negative 1. And that would be negative 6 times negative 1, which would give us this plus 6. From there, once again, simplify, so you've got the real parts and the imaginary parts, so 4 add 6 would give us a 10, and we're still taking away this 5i. Woo! And that's your answer. After that, z squared. So, for z squared, Tara, how would you do that? Perfect, you would have the 4 plus 3i, and because you're squaring it, you're multiplying it by itself. Again, we've got the brackets, so just multiply the brackets the way you have been doing for years. So you'd have the 4 times 4. You'd have the 4 times the 3i, which would be the plus 12i. 3i times 4, which again is plus the 12i. And 3i times 3i would be plus 9i squared. Oh, what do you do after that, Pavel? Good. Again, you know i squared is equal to negative 1. So we can say then that this would be 16. You've got plus 12i plus 12i. You could simplify that, so that would be plus 24i. And because you've got add 9 multiplied by this, negative 1. Remember, i squared is negative 1. It's 9 multiplied by negative 1, which would then become takeaway 9. So, just looking at the real parts, you've got the 16 takeaway 9, which would give you 7. And the imaginary parts, you've just got this 24i. So, gather your real parts and gather the imaginary parts. Woo! After that, moving on to look at what is known as complex conjugates. Woo! If you are given a complex number z, which is going to be of the form x plus yi, where well, you know x and y are real numbers, well, the complex conjugate of z is written as z bar. And what you do to get the complex conjugate is you would leave the real part just as it is. So z bar, the complex conjugate, would equal x. That's still staying. But what you do with the imaginary part is you change the sign. So instead of being plus yi, you would have take away yi. So leave the real part and change the sign for the imaginary part. So with complex number, z equals x plus yi. The complex conjugate would be z bar equals x take away yi. Let's try a few examples in a little game I like to call Find the Complex Conjugate. If you have z equals 1 plus 2i, Sebastian, what would you have for the complex conjugate? Fantastic. Well done, Sebastian. You would have z bar equals 1. The real part is staying as it is. And the imaginary part, you'd change the sign. So plus 2i would go to take away 2i. Woo! If you have the complex number z equals 5 take away 3i, Sam, what would you get for the complex conjugate? Brilliant. The real part would stay as 5, but the imaginary part, instead of being take away 3i, it would go to plus 3i. So you change the sign for the imaginary part. If you have the complex number w equals 4i, what would you have for the complex conjugate? Good. You would have w bar equals, and for that to here, help us out. Good. 
you would have W bar equals, and the real part, there is no real part, is really going to be zero plus four i, so the zero would stay as it is, we still don't have a real part, but the imaginary part, instead of being that positive four i, you would have negative four i. Fantastic. And last one, if you have z equals three, Megan, what are you thinking for that one? Excellent. Z equals three is not really a complex number. It's just a real number. For your complex number, you know you're gonna have some imaginary part, but there is no imaginary part here. So it's kind of a trick question. So for the complex conjugate for that, well, because it's just a real number, it's just gonna stay as it is. So you, I suppose you would have Z bar equals three. It's not changing. This example here is just showing you that it's only the imaginary part that's changing the sign. Any real parts would just stay as they are. Yeah. Let's move on and look at an example that uses complex conjugates then. So example three, given the equation z plus 2iz bar equals 8 plus 7i for the complex number z, express z in the form a plus bi. So the first thing you want to do for a lot of these questions, because you know z is a complex number and it's in the form of a plus bi, you would say let z equals a plus bi. Oh, and you know, a and B are going to be real numbers. Because we know Z equals A plus BI, well, we could sub that into our equation. We can replace the Z with A plus BI. We know I is going to be our imaginary number, but Z bar, what is Z bar going to be? Lorna. Good. You know Z bar is your complex conjugate, and the complex conjugate of the A plus BI would be, what would it be, Jim? Brilliant. It would be a takeaway BI. Fantastic. So we know Z would equal A plus BI. We know Z bar would be A takeaway BI. And what we can do in our original equation is we can now replace Z with A plus BI and we can replace Z bar with the A takeaway BI. So doing that, this is what you would end up with, the A plus BI plus 2I times the A takeaway BI. That would equal the 8 plus 7I. From there, because we've got brackets, just multiply out the brackets, so we've still got the a plus bi, we've got 2i times a, put the real parts first, so it's 2a, and then put the i just on the end, and then we would be taking away, and we've got the 2i times the bi, well you've got the 2, you've got the b, and then i times i would give you the i squared, and the right hand side would stay as it is. From there, where would you go next, Kyle? Good, because you have i squared wherever you get an i squared, replace i squared with negative one. Good, so you would still have the a plus bi, you've still got the plus two ai, you've got the two b, and we're replacing i squared with negative one, so that becomes the negative times the negative, which would give us the plus two b. And that would still equal that right hand side. And remember, i squared is negative one, which is why we are doing that. From there, I suppose on the left, we've got a real part, an imaginary part, an imaginary part, and a real part. What you're best doing is just gathering the real parts and the imaginary parts together. So, our real parts, we would just have the A plus the 2B. For the imaginary parts, we've got the BI plus 2AI. If you take out I as a common factor, we would have the B plus 2A multiplied by I, and that would still equal this right-hand side. Where do we go from there? How would we go about finding the values of A and B? What could we do after that, Malika? Perfect. We've got, with the real parts, we have A plus 2B. That's the real part on the left-hand side. And the real part on the right-hand side would be 8. Because we know that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, well, complex numbers are only equal if the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are also equal to each other as well. So we can say from here, because we know they are equal, we could have the real parts as A plus 2B, and that would have to equal 8. So we can equate the real parts. Equating the imaginary parts as well, well, for the imaginary parts, we've got the B plus 2A. And if we have B plus 2A, that would have to equal well, the imaginary part the coefficient of i is just going to be 7. From there, how would we go about solving these, Brandon? 
perfect, just use simultaneous equations. I'm not going to go through solving simultaneous equations, it's something you have been doing for years, but if you do that, you would end up getting a as 2 and b as 3. Which means then, because a is 2 and b is 3, well z, our complex number, is a plus bi, which means then we will have z equals, replace the a with 2, so we'd have 2 plus, and replace the b with 3, so we'd have 2 plus 3i. And that would be our answer. That would be z in the form of a plus bi, where we've just found a and b. After that, moving on to look at division of complex numbers. For example, if you have something like 8 plus i divided by the 3 plus 2i, how do we go about doing that? Well, what you do is to divide one complex number by another, what you do is you multiply both the numerator and denominator, so the top and the bottom of the fraction, by the complex conjugate of the denominator. The whole point in doing that is if you do it, well, it will change the denominator into a real number. So, let's try an example. So we have this 8 plus i divided by the 3 plus 2i. We know that we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. And, Ryan, what is the complex conjugate of the denominator? Good. We know that we've got the 3 plus 2i, so the complex conjugate. Leave the real part as it is, leave that as 3, but the imaginary part change the sign, so that would be 3 take away 2i. From here, we are going to be multiplying then the top and the bottom of this fraction by the 3 take away 2i. Doing that, well, we would end up with brackets in the top and in the bottom, and from here you can just multiply out the brackets. So the 8 times the 3 would give us the 24. We would have take away 16i, then plus 3i, which would give us a take away 13i, and i times negative 2i would be take away 2i squared. On the bottom, do the same thing, multiply out the brackets. So 3 times 3 would give you the 9. We would have take away 6i, but then a plus 6i, which would cancel out, and then 2i multiplied by negative 2i would give us take away the 4i squared. From here, where do we go? Good. You can replace i squared with negative 1. If you do that then, you'd have the 24 take away 13i, and the negative 2 times negative 1 would give us plus 2. The 9 take away 4i squared, well again, i squared is negative 1, so we'd have 9 take away 4 times negative 1, and 4 times negative 1, or negative 4 times negative 1, would give you that plus 4. Doing that then, well, if you gather your real parts here, that would give us 26. We've still got take away 13i, and 9 add 4 in the bottom would give us the 13. You can now divide both the 26 and the 13i by 13, which will give us then 2 take away i. Woo! And that will be our answer. Let's try another one. Example 5, express 1 take away 7i over 4 take away 3i in the form of x plus yi, where x and y are real numbers. Once again, doing this, how do you go about doing it? Holly, Perfect. What we need to do is we need to work out the complex conjugate of the denominator. So, Holly, the complex conjugate of the denominator would be... 4 plus 3i. Good. You'd have 4 plus 3i. Remember, the real part would stay as it is, but the imaginary part would change the sign. So, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by that 4 add 3i. Once you've done that, multiply out the brackets. Multiplying out the brackets here will give us 4 take away 25i, and then take away 21i squared. And the bottom, you would have the 4 times 4, 16. You would have a plus 12i. You'd have a take away 12i, which cancel out, and that would be take away 9i squared. What do we replace i squared with, Matthew? Good. Replace i squared with negative 1. So you would have 4 take away 25i, and then negative 21 multiplied by negative 1 would give us plus 21. With the negative 9 multiplying that by negative 1, that would give us the plus 9. Remember, you replace i squared with negative 1. From that then, well, you can just gather the real parts and the imaginary parts. So, on the top, the real parts, you would just have 25, and the imaginary parts, we've just got this takeaway 25i. On the bottom, well, we know that would just give us 25. From there, what you'll always find when you do this is that you'll end up just getting down to one line because this real part and the imaginary part should be able to divide by whatever is on the bottom. So, we've got 25 divided by 25, which is 1, and again the 25i divided by 
25, so we'd end up with one takeaway I, and that would be our answer. Yay! After that, final part of this introduction is going to be finding the square roots of complex numbers. So, example 7, find the square roots of negative 21, take away 20i. So in order to find the square root, we know we had something squared to give us this negative 21 take away 20i. And because we're looking for the square root of complex numbers, we know we're going to have a complex number multiplied by a complex number giving us this complex number. So we can say then that our complex number, just let that equal a plus bi. And we know if we squared that, what we ended up with was this negative 21 take away 20i. So to get the square root, and because it's a complex number, we know we had a complex number squared giving us that. Because on the left-hand side we've got a plus bi squared, well don't leave it as that, just multiply out the brackets. So we know that's the same as a plus bi times a plus bi. Multiply out the brackets from there, chugga! What would you get? Good, a times a would give us this a squared. We'd have plus a bi plus another ABI, which is plus 2ABI, and we've got BI times BI, so we've got plus B squared, I squared, and that would equal this negative 21, take away 20I. After that, where would you end up going? Well, again, whenever you see an I squared, replace I squared with negative 1. Brilliant. I squared's negative 1, so we can replace that. So we've got our A squared, we've got our plus 2ABI, and with this B squared, if you're multiplying it by negative 1, it would give us takeaway B squared. And that would equal, still, that right-hand side, the negative 21 takeaway 20I. Once you do that, what you want to do is you're wanting to gather your real part and the imaginary part. So the real parts here, we've got this A squared, and we've got the takeaway B squared, so we've got A squared takeaway B squared. That would be the real part if we just gather them together. Just write them beside one another. And with the imaginary part, we've got the plus 2ABI. It's the bits with I. So all we're doing is just rearranging this, writing the real part and then writing the imaginary part. And that would equal, again, this right-hand side. You know, from there, because you've got this complex number equals a complex number, well, you know, the real parts would have to be equal and the imaginary parts would have to be equal. So if you equate the real parts, we can say this a squared take away b squared. Well, that would equal the real part just on the right. And the real part, the bit without any i's, is this negative 21. If you equate the imaginary parts as well, well, the imaginary parts here, to take the coefficient of i, you've got 2ab and 2ab would equal and the coefficient of i on this side, the imaginary part, would equal the negative 20. From here, again, we've kind of got these simultaneous equations. We need to find out a and b. The best way to do this, though, is just using substitution. If we can rearrange one of the equations, this one here, into the form of a equals or b equals, we can sub it into the other equation. So, let's get this equation of, into the form of a equals. A would equal, if we divide both sides by 2b, would have negative 20 over 2b. But because we've got 20 in the top and 2 in the bottom, well, that would simplify. So we'd end up with negative 10 over b. So we've got our first equation, the a squared take away b squared equals negative 21. And we've got this a equals negative 10 over b. From there, because we have a equals, we can substitute that equation to the a equals negative 10 over b into this other equation, into equation 1. So we're going to sub that in, so replace a with negative 10 over b, so we'd have the negative 10 over b all squared, and if we square the negative 10, you get 100, square the b, you get b squared. So we'd have 100 over b squared, take away the b squared, equals negative 21. So that's us just subbing it in. From here, where do we end up going? Well, because we've got this fraction, because we're dividing by b squared, it's going to make it quite difficult to solve. So, start off by multiplying every single term by b squared. So multiply the 100 divided by b squared by b squared, and that would just give us 100. Multiply the takeaway b squared by b squared, it would be takeaway b to the power of 4. And multiply the negative 21 by b squared, that would just equal negative 21 b squared. 
From here, because you've got b to the power of 4 and b squared and a number, rearrange it into the form of b to the power of 4, b squared, number equals 0. And because you've got the negative here, you're best to add the b to the power of 4 to the other side, which means then you'd have 100 equals and also subtract 100 from both sides as well. So you will end up, if you rearrange it, b to the power of 4, take away 21b squared, take away 100 equals 0. And because we've now got it in this form, b to the power of 4, b squared, number equals 0, what do you do from there? Factorise! Brilliant, you would factorise it. So in order to get b to the power of 4, you know that would be b squared times b squared. And two numbers that would multiply to give 100, that you can make 21 with, well you'd have 25 times 4, and it'd be negative 25, and then plus 4, which would give you this negative 21. So, b to this b squared, take away 25, bracket, b squared plus 4 would equal 0. And from there, you can solve each part. So, let's go with this b squared add 4. So, you know because you've got something times something is 0, you know that either the b squared take away 25 equals 0, or this b squared add 4 equals 0. I'm just going to do this right-hand side bit first. B squared plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides and you get B squared equals negative 4. And from that, if you took the square root of both sides, we'd have B equals the square root of negative 4. But you can't get the square root of a negative. Even though this lesson has been going on to find the square root of a negative by bringing in imaginary numbers and bringing in I, this was our complex number. It was A plus BI. But A and B are both real parts. So A and B have to be real, which means we can't suddenly introduce another complex number. We can't bring in I. So because A and B are both real numbers, well, we can't solve that. That would give us an imaginary number. So for this, the B squared is negative 4. That would have no solution. Going on with this, though, B squared take away 25 equals 0. You could either factorise that, or you could add 25 to both sides and then square root. If you add 25 to both sides and then square root that, well, you would get b equals plus or minus 5. From that then, you know b would have two possible values. You'd have plus 5 or minus 5. And once we've found b, so a positive 5 or a negative 5, we can sub that into one of our equations. So subbing that back into the equation 2, well, that was a equals negative 10 over b. So if we replace b with 5, well, we would have a equals, well, that would be negative 10 divided by 5, which would give us negative 2. So we would have b is 5 and a is negative 2. We had the other value for b as well. So when b was equal to negative 5, we'll sub that into our equation to find out a. So a would equal negative 10 divided by negative 5, which would give us positive 2. So for this, then, we can say the square roots of the negative 21 take away 20i are, well, we would have the negative 2 plus 5i because we had a plus bi, so replace the a with negative 2 and the b with 5, so negative 2 plus 5i, but we would also have the 2 take away 5i, so that would give us both square roots, and we could, if we want, rewrite that as plus or minus the 2 take away 5i, because that would give us, if it was the positive, it would be 2 take away 5i, which we've got, and if you took the negative of that, we'd have negative 2 plus 5i. You don't have to write it as that, but these would be our answers. That has been an introduction to complex numbers. Try all of these questions in the booklet where you're looking at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. Just remember, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Perfect. Have fun. See ya. Woo!